Silvio, how are you today? Jim, great to see you again. <laughs> Good to see you. Hey, I was thinking about you, and I'm so uh, thank you so much for accepting this invitation, because uh, we've been getting, as you know, get, been getting a lot of traction with the role play functionality and the coaching capability that Walter and Winnie can do. And in fact, right before we got on this live stream, we had a director at uh, a well-known organization in Singapore who's super excited about this and thinking about ways they can use it in training, in um, advising people on how to engage better with executives inside of their own company. It's just all sorts of different things are kicking off. And I thought, this is so good because we're about to have a chat no pun intended, and you're going to talk to us about what you're doing in this area and more, and I'm so excited to hear more about it. Uh, maybe for anybody who's watching that doesn't know you, who hasn't seen some of the case studies that we featured on the website, you want to give just a little bit of an introduction to yourself and your background? Yeah, sure, and it's great to be with you today, but Jim, I'm uh, Silvio Navarro out of Singapore, and I run a little practice that focuses on sales enablement globally with very large multinational corporations. And most importantly, I'm a believer in what we can do with platforms like Walter. Um, and the reason I'm a believer is we've done a bunch of deployments, uh, over 100 workshops delivered using Walter, over 1,100 registered users, students, and, uh, you know, thousands of questions answered by Walter on behalf of our student base. So I'm delighted to be here and share a little bit about our story at Navarro and Associates. And Silvio, if you haven't seen it, has, has really graciously uh, done a bunch of case studies around this and some of the successes that he's had, the thought leadership that he's put into this. So we'll be sure to put links to that uh, and to your website and to some of the uh, resources that you've got on your website in the description around the live stream. But uh, talk to us about your objectives for these Walter deployments. What, what do you have in mind from a design perspective, from an outcome perspective? Talk us through that. Jim, one of the biggest challenges we face with tenured, intelligent salespeople these days is to help them raise the bar. And we do that by focusing on curriculums that develop a lot of acumen around personalization, really understanding the person you're calling on by role, by vertical industry, by desired outcomes. And so our objective simply stated is to really arm these, you know, terribly professional sales guys with the next level of, you know, insight about who they're calling on so that it resonates and they earn or win an appointment to really engage in those accounts and develop a broader relationship that will advance their business. So that's really the objective of using something like Walter is to help us really accelerate uh, that process with our students and correlate it to the curriculums we're teaching. Okay. So I guess that sort of points to a potential problem that you're trying to solve. How would you, if, if you're coming in and you're talking to, maybe it's a sales leader, maybe, maybe it's somebody in learning and development, um, what is the, the problem that you frame up for them? What are you trying to solve for them? I try to keep it simple. And there's four main categories. The, the first one, Jim, is what we call time to content. If you look at these organizations I work with, and you ask them about personalization or insights about the stakeholders they're calling on, they have hundreds of documents that they're asking salespeople to pour over in order to get skilled up for that call. So the time to content is a big problem. You know, they're just, and the fact is they just don't do it. Salespeople won't do it. They won't invest four hours to prepare for a one hour meeting. Mm -hmm. The second big area is controlling a narrative. Um, you know, there, there's plenty of chat GPT or Gemini or, or open AI or public platforms, but they're very concerned, particularly these large multinationals about controlling the narrative. They want to make sure that what responses or answers are shared with the salespeople are consistent with the company's message. And so they really look for a curated approach as opposed to a public uh machine learning approach. Yeah. And so that's a second big problem they have to tackle. And we do with, with Walter. Um, the, the third area is I work in a multinational world. So, you know, while we have salespeople or learning and development executives who speak English, 
they really operate in region in their native language. Mm. And so for years, I've been trying to solve the translation issue. And so one of the real benefits of Walter is it allows us to support 180 languages in something we call inline translation with 90 to 95 percent accuracy because of the context that these large language models give you. Translating to Japanese only works if you really understand the context or into Chinese only works if you really understand the context. And Walter delivers that to our translation services. And then finally, security and compliance. You know, the, the all these companies are very concerned about the security of the platform. But Jim, this is a nuance that I learned about only from one of my clients. And that is that as much as they're interested in protecting their data sets, they're equally interested in making sure that the kinds of interactions their salespeople are having aren't training external data sets, mm. giving those external data sets insights into potentially skill gaps that their own people have. And so by being able to just you know turn off machine learning and control uh, what those interactions, uh, you know where they're used, is really important. So those are sort of the four big problems in terms of both technology and uh, you know operational operational challenges that my clients tend to have. And we really do solve them with time to content, controlling the narrative, language support, and security and compliance are the big four that have done well for us. Sounds like you might have come to that as those, those might have been objections at one point or barriers that you needed to overcome to convince a client to, to try this out. Um, and, and it feels like you're able to navigate that successfully now. Are, are there other barriers that tend to come up or common questions or concerns that people express since this is a relatively new area of applying this type of generative AI in, in learning? What comes up as an objection or, or, or a barrier in your conversations? Well, I mean, if, if you're a firm like mine, your, you know, your objective is to really improve your curriculum. It's not to introduce an AI to a multinational sure. corporation. Our goal is to make our curriculum significantly more effective, both before, during, and after the deliveries. So one sort of best practice that I had to take uh, from the School of Hard Knocks is that we're not here to sell Noodle Factory in AI as the enterprise you know, platform for artificial intelligence deployments. Really narrowly focusing your objective with Walter around your curriculums, narrowly focusing the data sets that you're curating is a highly effective way to make sure you're keeping a fence around that religious question in any organization. <laughs> Are you bringing a you know enterprise AI into our business? And if so, let's spend two years evaluating it before we do anything. By being able to go in, Jim, and saying, look, we're using this for this class, for the students of this class, and only for content related to this class, we've been able to get adoption uh, from the largest multinational corporations in tech and uh, to great effect. So that's sort of one of my barriers, I think, that's kind of like a little hidden, um, you know, a, a little hidden uh, challenge. Yeah, I love that. That's, in fact, as you were saying that, what came to mind for me was, because uh, I think this is such an important uh, mantra we need to have about being nar intentionally narrowly focused. We can be enterprise grade without having to go enterprise wide. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, all of the things that you've talked about, the ability to, to lock things down, to be secure, uh, to be compliant, uh, to be safe, and to curate the content as opposed to letting learners go out into the wild, you know, all of those things are there. And, uh, but we do it in a way that is very intentionally, narrowly focused on the learning and learning outcomes. It's funny. Yeah, uh, I mean, it, I, I, I would just say, you know, it just reminds me of that simple phrase, fit for purpose. Yes. You know, make sure you're building something that's fit for a very explicit and narrow purpose. And you'll avoid the religious, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. discussion of, uh, you know, what are you bringing into our business? Yeah. You, pr you probably know Edutech, the big uh, conference was happening here in Singapore this week. And uh, Yvonne and I, my co-founder and I had the opportunity to do two Ask Me Anything 
sessions, which were really interesting because we heard a, a wide variety of questions. But one that I thought was very common and it really stood out for me was somebody said, as we hear often, why wouldn't I just use ChatGPT? Or why wouldn't I use Perplexity? And my response was, I hope you do use ChatGPT and Perplexity and Copilot and Gemini and Claude and on and on, uh, because there are going to be times where you want to use those tools. But, and, and to your point, let, let me flip it around and ask, if you want to have curated content, if you want to ensure that learners are getting answers and engagement from within the content or the curriculum that you're using, and really all of the the things that you talked about, and oh, oh, by the way, in a safe, secure, compliant environment, and you want visibility and control and the balance of flexibility, if, if these things are interesting to you, then there might be that narrow lane that in your teaching, in your workshops, you want a tool like Noodle Factory. There might yeah. be a fit and Walter could help you out with that. Okay, yeah. so hopefully we've got some people who are going, oh, well, this sounds interesting, but what does it look like? How does it actually work? And I, I was hoping, if you wouldn't mind, could you show us some of the ways that you approach the use of Walter, the application of Walter in your workshops with your learners, with your clients? Yeah. I, yeah. I, and Jim, I will, if you're willing to play a little role play here. Okay. And yes. uh, so I, I'm now going to make you- be a workshop you, without a role play. Yeah. So I'm going to make <laughs> you the head of learning and development of a large multinational corporation. Okay. All right. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to play the role of a salesperson who's, you know, attempting to prepare for my first meeting with you. And, and I want to make sure that in that first meeting, I'm able to demonstrate to you that I know your role. I know your priorities. I know your vertical in which you operate. And I have some visibility around what are the types of desired outcomes you're trying to drive. Okay. And so hopefully, Jim, you can see my Noodle Factory Navarro and Associates Walter panel you seeing that now i can't okay great maybe, maybe just click once to zoom in a little bit just one click if you wouldn't mind sure just command plus there we go perfect that's so make it a All little right. bit better not only for me but for if anybody's watching on a smaller screen absolutely how's that that's perfect okay so you know our students log in and again we're focused on personalization and so the way we use this in the workshop is we not only provide a set of primary target personas, but increasingly sellers are working with adjacent stakeholders, people who have huge influence on deals. And so mm -hmm. we actually have 45 curated personas. And for any of these personas, you can, uh, you can have Walter help you understand their KPIs, priorities, stakeholder value, operational challenges, vertical market use cases, deployment objections and across 20 different vertical markets. So this is what we mean by curated. We've brought this content in from all of our curriculums and from bespoke content that the client, often confidential content, that the client brings in to the deployment before the class. And so I might just start my interaction out with Walter by asking some very basic questions. So I got to meet with this guy named Jim. So before I do, he's the head of learning and development. And the first thing I want to know is how is he measured? You know, in what ways is, you know, what are the measurements, his key performance indicators that I need to be aware of? So I'm sure that I'm on point in this first meeting with Jim. I don't want to find myself talking about the wrong things. And as you can see very quickly wow. from our curated data set, these are some of the topics that I'd better be prepared to cover in my first meeting with Jim. And, you know, uh, um, let's just, let's ask seven more questions. We'll keep it, a fence around it. So let me ask, okay, these are cool. This is good. I have a good idea of the types of roles, he, the role he plays and what kinds of topics I explore. But what I want to know now is maybe I want to have some insight into how is Jim different from the, I don't know, the, the head of HR? Because some of mm -hmm. these things listed in front of you, Jim, they sure sound like, you know, traditional development type, you know, uh, human resource development. I'm not sure if I'm going to be having a head of human resources type conversation or a head of learning and development. So one of the cool things that Walter and large language models do is they can take two documents and create a comparison to really help me understand how I should 
make sure to steer clear of the HR domain and stay focused on the learning and development topics. And you can see here some of the great responses that Walter has crafted for us across two different documents. So I we've looked that. at a we've looked at a single dimension, now two dimensional. Let's take a look at a three dimensional. And in a class, I might ask, you know, before you prepare to meet with this learning and development head, maybe you want to have an idea of how, you know, you, you think they want to look at data and analytics, but I want to look at it in a retail market. So now I'm not only looking at your role, but I'm looking at your vertical industry. So now we're combining roles, vertical industries, and technical use cases. You can start to see how if this was done in the traditional fashion, that might be five different documents I'm asked to review, mm -hmm. but they've been brought together very quickly here that I better be talking in retail about things like performance support tools because we're interacting with customers or employee engagement tools because you know they're you know we want to make sure to retain our people even though they're dealing with very specific retail type interactions. I'm going to ask one more quick question. What are some objections I might want to anticipate? You know, uh, Jim's a nice guy, but he's probably going to put my back to the wall and I better have some ideas on you know, how to navigate some of these objections. And you can see that it gives me a very clear listing of the types of objections I should be prepared to handle. All right, so pretty cool. Main difference between what I just showed you, Jim, and what ChatGPT or other platforms would provide is that I'm controlling a narrative. All of these responses are the exact responses that you as the, the curriculum designer or your client wants their people to be given. There's no unknowns. We know where all these came from because we curated them. Now, yep. let me just go on to four quick questions. One of the things I wanna be able to do when I meet with you, Jim, is I wanna be able to have a really clear talking point on who we are as a provider. So many of my clients, both for early onboarding with their employees who are just practicing the company narrative or for more tenured employees, they might want to just, again, control the narrative. So rather than leaving it to the sellers to make it up as they go, we curate in our client-specific profile of their company, profile of their products and services, so that the sales team can very quickly brush up on how they're going to, in a concise fashion, communicate their value proposition to a stakeholder. All right, let's get in to a couple more cool questions. One of the things we do in every instance is we have a strong belief that success breeds success. And so we work with our students on being able to retell customer success stories effectively. So with every deployment we've done, we carry in hundreds of customer success stories. And the challenge is, they're very verbose. They're long-winded and they're generally <laughs> about the company. Right. So one of the things that Walter helps us do is to frame our questions in a way that brings us back very concise responses. Look at this quick question. It says, retell me a story about one of our customer successes in this exact format. And so in this case, we're asking for, I want to know who the customer is. I want to know what their problem statement is. I want to know what their desired outcome was. Were there any results they reported? Was there uh, any quotes by leaders in that business that I want mm. to share? And then here's what's cool. We've not only summarized the story, but we're able to describe the relevance of this story to Jim, the learning and development manager I'm about to meet with. So it allows me to correlate those roles, responsibilities, and desired outcomes with the story so that I'm sure that I'm telling it in a way that resonates with you. All right. That's really useful. I'm not, as you as you're showing this, I'm just thinking about as a learner. Okay, so th let me step away from my my persona, my role as the L and D executive. But as a learner, I'm thinking, wow, in the classroom, this could spark so many conversations. You could drive um, actions, activities in the classroom, in the workshop. But then afterwards, um, how could I use this? Practically, there's so many things that 
if you're if you're prepping for a meeting, as you alluded to earlier, if you're thinking about different strategies, you can kind of game that out in a way that you might not feel comfortable doing with your manager necessarily, or it might not be convenient to do that to do that with your manager. Well, and and Jim, one of the biggest challenges is just let's go back to the list. Time to content. I hope you appreciate that in just four or five minutes, the volume of content we've mm. collected and consolidated into a concise fashion for that seller. Controlling a narrative. We're sure that all these responses were as we want them to be as the, the company that's using this tool. Language support. I'm going to ask that last question, Jim. And you'll note at the bottom here, it says, tell me in Japanese. Mm. So this is an English success story. And I'm just going to say, look, I'm. I want to have these, this, the, the, the vocabulary, the, the narrative in my native language because I'm going to meet with the customer and we're going to speak in Japanese because I sell in Japanese. This is just an example of how this has absolutely changed the game for us in the training and development market to be able to support 180 languages that easily. And all from English source documents that have already been curated into the data set. And then finally, um, you know, we talked about security and confidentiality. None of this interaction is being used to train some public, you know, data set. Mm -hmm. But it can be viewed for us to train our data set and make it right. even more refined. So that's an example of in a, at a high level of, of what we do as it relates to preparing for the meeting. But look, before I'm going to have a meeting with the important guy like you, I think it's good <laughs> for me to get a chance to practice. And so one of the really great capabilities that comes with that curated data set is the opportunity to role play. And so I'm just, these are the last few questions I'm going to ask, and we're going to introduce you to Sam. Sam stands for simulate a meeting. And she's another bot. That. Yeah, Sam, she's another bot. Meeting. And yeah, Simi, that's who Sam is. And so Sam is going to want to know, all right, sure, let's role play. But you're going to have to tell me a little bit, Silvio. And so tell me who you want to meet with and what you are, you know, you've just prepared with all that work you just did. And give me a little bit of insight as to what you are anticipating might be the primary concerns that Jim's going to have. And so I might just tell Sam, Sam, let's have a little interaction here. It's going to be a learning and development executive in a retail market. And they're concerned about these issues that I've shown here. And so now I've told the bot who I want the bot to be in, you know, to practice. It's great. Let's role play. You ready to go? Just say, okay, I'm ready to go. So now this is where our students have an opportunity to really practice fluency on what we taught them in the workshop and be reassured that they're ready to have that meeting. Cause you know what? You get one shot. You don't get to come back and meet this person twice. Yeah. So this is really powerful. So here we have Sam greets you with a warm smile and sits down at the conference table. And she starts out with this, you know, great. You know, these are some of the challenges we're facing. Tell me, uh, you know, where do you think we should start? And I'm a salesperson and I've prepared. So I'm going to start by saying, look, normally, here are the kinds of challenges that I encounter when I meet with learning and development executives. And I go through the details of what I'm finding from my preparation. I experience with L&D leaders. And then Sam responds very quickly. Yeah, thoughtfully, considering your points. And she says, absolutely right. These are our challenges. And you'll see that she starts to try to drive me into solutioning. You know, what kind of solutions or approaches have you seen work? And I'm not ready to go there. As a good, you know, disciplined salesperson, <laughs> I'm going to pause and just say, you know, before we go there, look, what are the implications for you for having these challenges? And she says, oh, okay, interesting. And she shares what it means to the business to have those challenges. And again, she's trying to push me into product mode, and I'm just going to be a good disciplined salesperson, and I'm going to say, wait, look, are there any specific use cases in retail that you want to share with me? And then the bot knows to say, look, uh, you know, here's some key areas that we're focused on. 
So as a salesperson, I have an opportunity now to quickly think about how am I going to respond to this? So I'm just going to give her a response that will cue up, hopefully, an opportunity to tell her a success story. So I'm going to tell her, look, if you're like the other people that I've met with, Jim, you know, here are the kinds of challenges and the approaches they're taking to overcoming those challenges. All these insights from Walter. And you'll Amazing. see that you'll see and I'm going to wrap it up here that that, uh, you know, she's very impressed by that. And she's asking me about how we can address those concerns. So she's starting to push me. So I'm now ready to go into my final element, which is I'm going to share a customer success story. And I'm going to hope that that resonates with her as a proof point that we should meet again. And it would do the same with you, Jim, in person. I would want to get you excited enough that you'd let me come in and start some discovery discussion. So I'm sharing the Navarro and Associates Calibra story. I'm free to say that. That's a publicly available story. And she listens to it and says, wow, that's really compelling. I'm really interested in how you did that. given." Uh, you know, your success. My one concern is, you know, how are people going to adopt these new tools? So mm. she's raising one concern. So before I close out the meeting, I'm making sure not to ignore her objection. And I'm going to get a chance to practice if I'm objection handling properly. And you're really she, applying your training here. Yeah, I'm applying <laughs> my training. And then she says, fantastic. And I'm ready now to close out with a suggestion for a next step. So as you can see, it's very realistic because it's based on a very rich data set that understands what a learning and development executive might be looking for in an interaction. And it's consistent with the curriculums we teach on how I should behave as a salesperson when I have an opportunity to meet with this executive. You'll notice that she gave me a meeting, so I won the meeting. I'm going to say thanks, and we're going to see if we're ready to go with, I'm wondering, how did I do? I just had this interaction with the learning to develop. Am I ready to meet Jim? All right. And one of the cool things that Walter does with Sam is using a rubric that I configured, that we configured, we're able to give the seller, the student, immediate feedback on what they did well and where they could improve their interaction across, in this case, I think it's six different dimensions of both what we taught, but also how they delivered in this role play. And so these are just a few illustrations, Jim, of you know how we're using Walter to support our curriculums, how our users or students, sellers, benefit from reducing the time to content getting these insights very quickly across large data sets, how we're able to control the narrative by making sure that all these responses are consistent with what both my curriculum and our clients want. And then finally, supporting language across 180 different markets that we operate in. Again, for me, a total game changer. Mm. And finally, all this securely behind a walled off environment that doesn't train external data sets and is fully compliant to the confidentiality requirements of the kinds of clients I serve. That's all I wanted to show you, Jim, a little bit about so Walter good. and Sam That's uh, so good. and get a feel for, you know, you guys are great, uh, provided us with a great platform, but we had to figure out how to leverage the rich feature set of this platform to be really tightly knitted with our curriculums. And yeah. we're, we feel really good about it. Well, I can see just an infinite number of, directions you could as a student you could go with this because it's all very tailored and personalized to the way that you interact in these scenarios in fact i was thinking about the what you've got here on the screen right now that's like a coaching session because it's here's what you did well here's what you can improve in and think about how if you if you use this as a meeting prep tool it would help you to spot maybe uh, weaknesses or blind spots or uncover different approaches that you could take. Uh, I'm curious, have you tried, because you, you were obviously applying the learning in a really compelling way there, but have you tried being um, somebody who doesn't apply the learning very well? Um, it's a little bit of a leading yeah. question because I've tried this, 
being a, yeah. a quote unquote uh, bad student. But have you tried that in, in this context? I have. No. And, I, and I'll tell you the learning I took away from it is it really set me, it made me review the rubric because it was a little harsh and oh, okay. I don't think, I don't think it was reinforcing because my, my criteria were a bit too rigorous, too high standard. Not uh. that that's bad, but the result was, is that it was, it was evaluating people with really low scores, but it gave them great insights on what they could do better. So what I did was tweak the scoring. And when I don't follow the criteria that we taught in the workshop or that we want to develop in the learner, um, it, it'll tell me that now. It, it'll offer me suggestions for improvement, but much more gently and reinforcing and less harshly and negative. So I'm not, you know, I'm going to be candid. You really need to, to have it, you know, test this stuff out, get a feel for how the rubric works and make those little refinements because you don't want to put something on autopilot and have it right. delivering a negative effect to your students. That's a really, really good point. Uh, and I think very broadly, that's a good design principle for anybody who's looking to use AI tools with students uh, whether it's in school or in a workshop, you want to make sure you have full visibility and kind of try out different scenarios, think about the consequences. Uh, but yeah, that's that's good. There's different directions that we could go on that. That's probably a topic for another day. Yeah, I want well, to hey, say one last yeah. thing on this real quick, Jim. I know what I've described sounded like a lot of documents and a lot of setup and a lot of very, it looks mm. almost very heavy lifting. But I do have to share, we stood up our first deployment of Walter for our first large multinational in 90 days. So the speed with which we can get through ingesting documents, indexing them, testing the algorithm, refining the rubric. I, I don't wanna set the impression that this has been a two year development effort. We did it in 90 yeah. days. Yeah. We were delivering classes 90 days after we started. So I wanna encourage people to you know just get started. That's the thing to do. Ingest some documents, you know, test out your prompts and you can get from zero to deliverable very quickly. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Uh, we, we hear that time and time again. You've, you've heard this with some of our common clients. The time to value is, is another way that sometimes they, they phrase it is very, very quick. And like, like these nuanced points of value that, uh, that come out, we, we never want to forget that. What is it that, uh, those learning learning and development executives that you work with value so highly, and how do we lead with that as opposed to, as you said, avoiding leading with this is an AI tool. No, it's a it's a narrowly focused L and D tool, learning and development outcome tool. Jim, based on how I handled the role play, if I had a meeting with you, <laughs> would you invite me back? I definitely would, and I'm not All just right. saying that because I. That it was sort of a meta experience. What you were doing there, I was kind of envisioning if you were doing this as a demo for a learning and development executive in a in a very uh, subtle way, you're selling to me, but I'm actually kind of selling myself because you're appealing to all of the things that I know really resonate with me, but you're doing it in, in such a subtle way. Uh, it doesn't come across as a hard sell at all. So definitely you'd get the next meeting. <laughs> all right, great. Thank you. All right. Hey, well, thank you again for doing this. Now, if if anybody wants to find out more about you and what you do, we'll have links in the description, but do you want to tell everybody where they can find you on social media yeah. or, or the web? Yeah, it's navarroandassociates.com. Uh, you'll find uh, not only descriptions of our products, but most importantly, customer success stories. These are really cool because they're in the words of our own, of our large accounts. They'll share with you what they valued from these large scale deployments. Uh, you know, one of them, 15,000 users, you know, so it's really compelling. So, you know, check us out. And in LinkedIn, Navarro and Associates uh, in LinkedIn, and you'll see some of our blogs. And most recently, we started doing some podcasts. So if you're on the road and you just want to hear about Walter or Sam, or you want to hear about some of our success stories, just take a listen. Perfect. Well, again, thank you, Silvio, and we'll talk to you very soon. All right, Jim. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks for the opportunity. All right. Take care. All right. Cheers. Bye-bye.